So welcome to this uh, particular session. This basically is a, a post results review of the AFM paper 2024, 2024, the August 2024 AFM paper. We're going to do like a post-match analysis, a post-match analysis for the students who attempted this paper and they failed. The question is, were they really supposed to fail in this paper? Or was it because of uh, exam tensions? As I always tell my students, AFM, business data analytics, even AFR, those papers, it is not even the very best of the students in this case here who pass. These are papers that require just some little of what here, yeah, courage. You need some little courage. And of course, you need to be under the hands of uh, an experienced coach like ourselves here, All right? And then now experienced coaches plus some little courage. And of course, practice on your side. Then automatically, you should be able to do what you to, pa to pass. So I, I will be able to do just three questions or two and a half questions because it's supposed to, it's supposed to take us maximum, maximum of 30 minutes. And then we shall be able to create uh, another time to do what here, to complete. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I would want us to start with uh, question number one. B, question number one, B, August 2024. So August 2024, August 2024, question number one, boy. August 2024, question number one, boy. I read, I'll be able to do the theories later. I hereby read this. So we are told here, a company is considering two mutually exclusive projects, namely project A, project B, the company uses the certainty equivalent approach to evaluate capital projects. The estimated cash flows and the certainty equivalent coefficients for each project are as follows. So we have here the year, we have project A cash flows, we have certainty equivalent coefficients, we have project B certainty equivalent coefficients. The risk free rate is 5%. The risk free rate is 5%. Risk free rate is 5%. So I advise the company on which project to undertake using certainty equivalent method. So then gentlemen, we call it certainty equivalent coefficient. Certainty, certainty equivalent coefficient method method here, right? CEC method, CEC approach, CEC approach. So basically here, to get the total present value, to get the total present value, you will take in this case here, what we call the certain cash flows. The certain cash flows, the certain cash flows, in this case here, which must be discounted. So basically the discounted, the discounted certain cash flows, just that. I will take in this case here, the cash flows that I have, the normal cash flows, of course, they have not been adjusted for what year any risks. So what I will do, the first thing I will do is to take the cash flows that I have, I do some adjustments. I do some adjustments. So I will have two projects here. I've been given two projects here. The first project, the first project, the first project is called project A. So we have here project A. So project A, we have zero, one, two, three, up to four. I'll be able to ignore the thousands. So I will work with 45, 45, times zero, that's a negative. So I want my figures to be in millions. So the second one will be 22.5 positive, 22.5 positive. Then year number three, I can see 15, and then 15, like that, 15. And then I can see the certainty equivalent coefficients. Certainty equivalent coefficients times zero, of course, this is one. 
as I progress, of course, uh, that certainty will diminish, will decline. So we have 0 0.85, 0 0.85, we have a 0 0.80, 0 0.80. Then we have in this case here 0 0.75, 0 0.75. And then lastly, we have here 0 0.1 year. Lastly, we have 0 0.60 like that. So we have the certainty equivalent coefficients. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I will do, of course, these are the normal cash flows. These are the normal cash flows. Now I simply need to come here and give the examiner certain cash flows. Certain cash flows. The cash flows that we are certain with. We are certain to receive. How do we get this? I will take these normal cash flows. These are the normal cash flows. I will take the normal cash flows and multiply them with the CECs to get this. So like the first one will be negative 45. The second one, I would expect to be given this figure by yourselves. 22.5 times 0.85, please give me an answer. 22.5 times 0.85, please give me an answer. So Stanley, 19.125. All right. So from there, we have 22.5 times 0 0.8. 22.5 times 0 0.8. How much are we getting? 18. Thank you so much. All right. Then we have here 15 times 0 0.75. 15 times 0 0.75. 11.5. Thank you so much. And then we have here 15 times 0 0.6. 15 times 0.6, 9. Now, for some reasons, we saw students in this case here who are adding this column as if they have discounted. No, you will have to discount. So come here and they give us the discounting factors, give us the PVF. PVF, and please, even this examiner was very lenient because if it were me and in your normal classes, you must have seen that. I gave you the cost of capital in the normal class, and I gave you risk-free rate. So remember, if it is a tenity equivalent coefficient method, we normally use risk-free rate to discount. Why do we use risk-free rate to discount? It is because these cash flows now are without risks. We are certain about them. So we shall discount at the risk-free rate. We are discounting, you can write this somewhere there, we are discounting this at the risk-free rate of return. So the examiner has given us the risk-free rate of return. The examiner has given us the risk-free rate of return. You can see it here. The risk-free rate of return is 5%. Other examiners would have given you cost of capital 10%, and then they give you risk-free rate as 5%. It's imperative for us to remember that we shall always be using what we call what here, risk-free rate of return to discount these, to discount these. So we are discounting this at 5%. And now remember to discount this at 5%. What type of cash flows do we have here? The type of cash flows that we have here are irregular. These are irregular cash flows. And if they are irregular cash flows, we know that PVF, PVF will be 1 plus R raised to negative N. PV will be 1 plus R raised to negative N. That's how we get our present value interest factor. Remember, we have got two types of cash flows. We have the annuity and we have the irregular ones. So these are irregular, they're fluctuating. So in this case, we shall use this formula, 1 plus R. You see our R is 5%. 5% is the same as 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 plus 1. 0 0.05 plus 1. That gives me 1.05. So we, we have 1.05 throughout. 1.05 throughout. 1.05 throughout. So you keep on raising this to negative 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then you give me answers, you know. You can easily now give me answers. Of course, any number raised to 0, because this will be 0 at the end of the day. Try this in your calculator. Any number raised to 0 will always be equal to what year? will always be equal to 1. Any number raised to 0 will always be equal to 1. Just try that, you will see in your calculator. 1.05, and then you say raised to. In your calculator, you'll be able to see 1.05 raised to 
negative 1. You'll be able to see negative 0, I mean, negative 0. You'll be able to see, of course, you must put this in brackets, something like that. Right? Then you'll be able to see straight away that uh, this will be equal, depending on your calculator. There are calculators that will be able to pick without even putting them in brackets. All right? Of course, most of you are using the discounting tables. You can decide to use the discounting tables as well. So can somebody give me this value in four decimal places? In four decimal places, please give me this value in four decimal places. So for the students who are just joining us, we are doing a post-mortem analysis after the release of the results. So Rosemary gives me 95.24. Point 95.24. Point Thank you so much. I can actually just delete all this because of the space aspect. All right, now that you have been able to write this down. So we have here one, we have here 0 0.9524, and then we go to the next one. The next one, what do we have here, somebody? Stanley has all of them, 0 0.907, 0 0.907, 0 0.907, 0 0.907. From there, we have the next one. The next one will be 0 0.8638, 0 0.8638, 0 0.8638. And then lastly, 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 what do we have here lastly? Lastly, we have 0 0.8227, 0 0.8227, 0 0.8227. So are these figures correct, ladies and gentlemen? Are we agreeable with these figures before we continue? Thank you so much. Then come and create the last column of discounted cash flows or present values. Discounted cash flows. Now discounted cash flows, you can give me discounted cash flows in two decimal places, two decimal places. Of course, what are we doing? We are taking now these certainty cash flows times the PB. So the first one gives us negative 45, negative 45. How about these two decimal places? This times this, give me an answer I write here. This times this, give me an answer I write here. According to Stanley, we have 18.21. Thank you so much, 18.21. And then we have 18 times 0 0.907, 18 times 0 0.907, 18 times point, uh -huh, 16.33, 16.33, 16.33. And then we have 11.25 times 0.8638. So we have 11.25 times 0.8638. So for the students who are following me on YouTube, I expect you right away to, I mean, take a minute and uh, subscribe to my channel. Take a minute, subscribe to my channel. And I also want to welcome those who have not yet registered uh, in our classes to join us. Our inquiries number is 793 555 0793-555-000. So I'm being given a number here of 9.72. 9.72. 9 and then we have here lastly 9 times 0.8227. 9 times 0.8227. What do we have there? 7.40. Now that these are discounted cash flows, all of them, please come and add for us. And whatever you will get here will be known as net present value. Whatever you get here, is known as net present value. Whatever you get is known as net present value. Why net present? It's net of the initial outlay. 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 So is there somebody who can give me this figure? Anybody who can give me this figure? 6.66 viable. Thank you very much. 6.66 viable because it's positive, isn't it? It's positive. It's positive. Because it's positive here. But now remember, we have got two projects, A and B. So what I expect you to do later on, you can use the same, same approach to give us NPV for project B. And then you compare. Remember, net present value, the higher it is, the better. So you'll be able to go for the project that has got a higher NPV, a higher NPV, a higher NPV. Honestly speaking, as we do now post-mortem review, is this something we are done in class? Of course, yes. Not once, not twice. You see, the good thing with RCM is that uh, we normally have a lot of uh, the middle classes. Like during the middle classes, I looked at this area severally, severally. All right. And we're going to be having the same remedial classes here. Remember, you're attending your normal classes. Like if it is AFM evening, we have AFM evening on 
Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now, after your three lessons are over, I also expect you, like in the following week, to attend our remedial classes, remedial, where basically we repeat exactly what you've done here, but of course you can now ask questions. You're able to see things even much better. The remedial classes are on Mondays and when? Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. They are not compulsory. You can do without them. I normally call those sessions here sessions for the slow learners. Quite a bad terminology, but I've seen that thing working magic, working magic, working magic. So like now tomorrow evening, tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., we shall be having remedial classes where we basically look at uh, what we have been able to do in the evening class. And then, of course, we have early morning classes, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Like that. Those remedial classes will do wonders, will do wonders, will do wonders. Let me ask you a question. Have we now understood what Molimo has done? Have we understood what Molimo has done? Have we understood what Molimo has done? Ha. Ah. I'm waiting to get from the other students. Great, great. So then will you be able to do the one for project B later? Or do you want Molimo to do it here? Project B, would you want Molimo to do it here? Project B, fortunately now you have this will not change. Yeah, will not change. Yeah, we do later. Thank you so much. Let's do later. Let's do later. Let's do that later. Thank you so much. And then the question that wasn't performed very well, and I wondered, and this really was the, actually the easiest, if you ask me, is this question number one, C. Question number one, C. But I would want in this case here, this to be in a different video, so again, I call upon all the students who are following me on YouTube to ensure that they are subscribing and then they watch the next video, which now will be able to do this part what here, part B, part C, question one, C.